Hi, I'm Austin. In this video, I'll introduce you to using feed rules in Google Merchant Center. Feed rules are an easy way to make changes to product data that has already been imported into your Merchant Center account. Let's say, for example, you've just imported all the products from your online store, but you realize that you're missing a few pieces of data like the color or the brand name. Feed rules are an easy way to add or edit this data without having to make the same changes across your online store. Let's look at a few examples in this introductory video to using feed rules in Google Merchant Center. Begin by navigating to the feed section of your Merchant Center account, and then click on the title of your product feed, and then navigate to the feed rules tab. This is the main interface where you'll make changes to the product feed using rules. So today we're using our sample store, which is trail map apparel. And because this is an apparel store, I know that I need to make a few changes already, which are adding the gender, the age group, and the color of each product to our product feed. So I'll start with gender. And to do that, I'll just click plus. I'll type in the name of the attribute that I want to work on. So gender. And I can see here, just, just to be sure that I know what I'm doing, uh, I can see the attribute gender at the top left. And from here, what I want to do is I want to take the word men or women or girls or boys and use those words as a cue to tell Merchant Center to set the gender to either male or female. So I'll start by clicking on the conditions section here. And I'm going to type in title because I want to look in the title. And I want to look in the title for either the word women or men. And then I'll also click or because I want to use girls as well. So girl, if the title contains women or girl, then set to, and then I'll click in this little drop down menu and I'll set it to female. And then I'll hit OK. And now I can see if I click this little arrow button at the top right here, this will just randomly cycle through products in the feed. And I can see once I reach a women's product, I get a small preview of the active or the old value, which is set to unisex for now, but I want to change that to this draft value, which is female. And I can see that right here. So now I'm going to do the same thing for men. So I'll click add source and I'll just do exactly what I did before. I'll do title, and I'm going to do boy. And then I'm going to also add or title contains men set to male. And then I'll click OK. And I can see that I've got successful changes across all the samples that I've just viewed. Now, as an alternative to doing what I just did here on the second one, I could actually just leave this empty because as you'll notice, Google's already set a condition that says update attribute if gender has no value. So in other words, if there's no value set in this top rule, I can just by default set it to male and that'll make my rule slightly simpler to edit later. So, Yep, I can see that it's still working. So it's common in apparel stores to have something along the lines of a, you know, a men's, a women's, and then a unisex. So as a last example here, and then we'll be done with the gender, I could stick with this uh, that I had set up before. Title contains men. Or actually, let's as an example, just say, let's pretend that the boys product, um, just for the sake of example, again, is going to be unisex. So I'm going to do, uh, so if the title contains men, set to male, OK. And then I'm going to add the source one more time. Then if has no value, we're going to set it to unisex. So that's common in, in apparel stores. So if, if the product title doesn't contain um, either women or girls or men, then just leave it as, or uh, sorry, set it to unisex. So now I'll just click through a couple times. And I'm sure I'll find a boys one eventually. All right, perfect. So we're done with gender. So I'm going to click Save as Draft. 
and then I can see my gender rule right there. And now let's go on to age group. So I'm going to click plus, and then I'm going to type in age group. And then from here, the only, I think the fastest way on this store will be to set anything that doesn't contain the word boy or girl to adult. And then, of course, anything that does contain the word boy and girl will be set to youth. You'll always have to sit down and think about your product data a little bit before setting rules because it's quite easy to make a few mistakes along the way. So let's see. So I'm going to type in title. But title contains, let's see, women. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do title contains boy or title contains girl set to add value. Uh, this is going to be kids. OK. You can see this is already happening here because I've been working on this feed a little bit before. But I'll just add um, a second rule that says if conditions, so if update um, attribute of age group has no value from the rule above, then set to adult. And this will cover all of our products because I know in the store that anything that doesn't have the word um, girl or boy is going to be an adult shirt. So I'll just click through and check that I'm right on that. And yes, so pretty much everything's going to be an adult. Uh, so I'm going to click Save as Draft. So we're done there. OK, now the last thing I want to do is I want to add um, the color to the product title. So let me show you as an example one of the existing products. It's not uncommon for apparel stores to add or sorry, to enhance the product title by adding the color to the end of it. So for example, this product, it might look nicer in the shopping ad to name it Women's Grand Canyon Trail Map, or uh, sorry, Trail Map Print T-shirt, Navy. So I can do that with the feed rule by clicking the plus button, and I'm going to edit the title because I want to append the color to it. And there's a really cool feature, and there's a lot that I'll link in the in the notes below. There's a lot of different features that you can use to edit your data. So I'm going to use this append feature, and definitely look through these options if you've got other more advanced uh, or complicated changes that you need to make to your data. But I'm going to use the append feature, and I'm going to do that by clicking. Um, first of all, sorry, I'm going to leave the conditions as none. So this that means this rule will always be applied. So if you want to make a rule apply to every product, just simply leave this as is at the top. And then click Add Modification. And I'm going to use the Append feature. And I'm going to add a value from the feed. Whoops. I'm going to add a value from Process Attributes, which is Color. And then I'll just click OK. And because I'm editing the title attribute, I don't really have to do anything except select append color. And then it should be good to go. So let me hit cancel there. Yeah. So I can see my colors in here. And here's a mistake that I can quickly fix. You can see there's no space right there. So what I'll do is I'll come back. I'll remove the color. I'll just click space. And I'm going to add a custom value, which is just a space as identified by the two open quotes. And then I'll put in color again. Color. Click OK. And now I can see that I've actually got a space between the end of the product title and the color. All right, now I'll do Save as Draft. And then we're done. Now, before I end this tutorial, I need to point out one thing regarding the use of colors in product titles. If I consult the help article for the color attribute, I'll find way at the bottom here that there's actually an example of what to do with unique color names, which is applicable to my store, because rather than using the word red for this shirt, I'm using the phrase Heather Raspberry. And I can see in this example that it's recommended to use a more standard color name, like red or black, in the title if I'm submitting a unique color to the color attribute. So 
I've actually gone ahead and done this and just cut that part out of the tutorial. But to show you how to make a uh, more flexible use of the modifications feature, I'll quickly show you that what I've done is I've actually come in and I've used the conditions option and I put in uh, the condition if the processed attribute color contains the word raspberry, then append a space and then append red to the end of the title. And like I said, I've done that with the other three colors here. So now everything has a more standard color. Even navy I've changed to blue because that's a more standard color for that. So all right, I'll click Save as Draft. Finally, finish your rules by clicking the Test Changes button. And then wait 10 to 20 minutes for the report and check it carefully to be sure you haven't introduced any errors into your feed. Then you can click apply over here and wait another 30 to 60 minutes before seeing changes take place in the all products section. Um, again, wait, wait, wait a while before you expect to see those changes here because this takes even more time. And then know that it can take a couple hours actually for data that's been updated here to actually then make it finally into your Google ads campaigns. So just be patient and check that in a few hours. Now, this was a 101 level intro to using feed rules, and there are many more possibilities and more use cases for advanced rules, which I'll link to below in the comments. So if you've got a specific question like using, say, the splitting and choosing rule or the uh, calculated numeric values rule, check back later or just leave a question in the comment, and I'll try to post a video that answers your specific question if I can. All right, I hope you found that useful. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more from our channel, please remember to subscribe. Thank you and good luck.